The red line on this chart shows the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet Canal, which is a 76-mile channel constructed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at the direction of Congress in the mid-20th century. It provided a shorter route between the Gulf of Mexico and New Orleans Inner Harbor Industrial Canal via the Intracoastal Waterway. In 2005, Mr. Go channeled Hurricane Katrina's storm surge into the heart of Greater New Orleans, contributing significantly to the subsequent multiple engineering failures experienced by the region's hurricane protection network. In the aftermath, the channel was closed. A permanent storm surge barrier was constructed in the Mr. Go at 2009, and the channel is closed to maritime shipping. We're now flying up Bayou La Latour, which is where we launched from on the east side of the bayou, into the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet. This is the canal that large ship used to have a shortcut between the Gulf of Mexico and the town. You saw the red line of the chart was pretty straight compared to the winding Mississippi River. It actually only saves 37 miles, but it's good in principle, right? The Mr. Go begins just west of I-510's crossing of the inter Gulf Intracoastal Waterway in New Orleans East and takes a pass south, southeast through St. Bernard Parish wetlands just west of Lake Bourne all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico near Gardner Island. Much criticized for its negative environmental impact such as saltwater intrusion, wetland erosion, and storm surge amplification during Hurricane Katrina, the Mystigo was closed in 2009. Conceptually, the Mystigo was first envisioned early in the 20th century as a way to provide shipping with a shorter route to the Gulf of Mexico. The port of New Orleans felt increasingly disadvantaged by the length of time ocean-going vessels needed to navigate the twists and turns of the Mississippi River from the Gulf to the ports versus the much closer proximity of the open water offered by its emerging competitors, such as the modern part of Houston. In particular, it came into being as a consequence of the completion of the Houston Ship Canal in 1914. New Orleans' initial response debuted in 1923 with the inauguration of the Industrial Canal linking the Mississippi River and Lake Pontchartrain, thereby creating the Lower Ninth Ward in New Orleans East. Now you see us flying up now to the closure structure, which is this immense amount of rock anchored firmly into the land to prevent storm surge, to prevent further erosion, and to close the Mr. Go to maritime shipping traffic. In 1943, the proposed project was initially presented to the U.S. Army Car of Engineers. In a matter of decades, rapid growth of average ship size over the 20th century rendered the canal locks connecting the Industrial Canal to the Mississippi River obsolete. The Mr. Go, as promoted in the 1950s, was to help rectify this deficiency by permitting deep drive vessels to access the Industrial Canal and the Inner Harbor. Authorization for the Mr. Go was formally provided by the United States Congress in the Rivers and Harbor Act of 1940, I'm sorry, 1956. Construction was completed in 1968. I actually went down the Mr. Go shortly thereafter, ferrying a fishing boat from New Orleans down to the mouth of the river. It was quite a canal, <laughs> kind of expensive for my, for the little fishing boat. Due to the rapid erosion of the surrounding marsh, the canal was already as much as four times wider in 2005 than as originally constructed. When Mr. Go was built, the channel was 650 feet wide at the surface. By 2005, the channel had opened up to 3,000 feet and in some locations had to be dredged annually. Mr. Go's operational performance. With the completion of Mr. Go in 1965, the Port of New Orleans advanced a plan to largely abandon its wharfs along the Mississippi River and relocate its activities to the inner harbor created by the Industrial Canal, the Intracoastal Waterway, and the Mr. Go. This vast project, termed Central Port USA, never secured sufficient funding 
and was quietly jettisoned by the port in mid-1980s. After the abandonment of the Central Port Project, the Port of New Orleans refocused its efforts on improving in infrastructure along the Mississippi River and what little maritime traffic the Mystigo hosted progressively dwindled, opening up to withering criti criti criticism. In 1997, the Competitive Enterprise Institute, a libertarian organization dedicated to the principles of free enterprise, attacked the Mr. Go on economic grounds. They said, the promised economic development along the 76-mile channel in poverty-stricken St. Bernard Parish has yet to materialize. What the Mr. Go has delivered is an eight plus million dollar yearly maintenance plan for commercial and recreational waterborne traffic, the nearly one billion dollar price tag for the less than two large container ships a day that use the channel is baffling, especially considering the channel only shaved 37 miles off the original route. Prior to Hurricane Katrina, environmentalists and others, including voters of St. Bernard Parish, whom the canal was intended to help, called for its closure. Criticism intensified following the hurricane when engineers implicated the Mr. Go in the failure of the levees and flood walls protecting large parts of Greater New Orleans. Mr. Go was derivatively termed a hurricane highway in Katrina's wake due to its apparent role in amplifying the impacts of the storm surges. According to a congressional hearing statement, traffic on the Mr. Go has fallen by more than 50% since 1986. As of 2005, less than one ocean-going vessel per day, on average, used the Mr. Go Canal, which costs approximately $13 million annually to maintain. Like many waterways constructed by the Corps, the Mr. Go has failed to attract as much of traffic as the Corps predicted when the project was constructed. Levees along the Mr. Go and the Intracoastal Waterway were breached in approximately 20 places, directly flooding most of St. Bernard Parish in New Orleans East. Storm surge from Mr. Go also is a leading suspect in the three breaches of flood walls along the Industrial Canal. Three months before Katrina, Hassan Mashriki, a storm expert at Louisiana State University's Hurricane Center, called Mr. Go a critical and fundamental flaw in the, hurricane, in the Corps' hurricane defenses, a Trojan horse that could amplify storm surges 20 to 40 percent. Following the storm, an in engineering investigation and computer modeling showed the outlet intensified initial surge by 20 percent raise the height of the wall of the water by three feet and increase the velocity of the surge from three feet per second to eight feet per second. Without Mr. Go, the flooding would have been much less, he said. The levees might have been over top, but they wouldn't have been washed away. The Army Corps of Engineers disputes this causality and maintains Katrina would have overwhelmed the levees with or without the contributing effect of the Mr. Go since storm surge was per perpendicular to the length of the canal. In May 2007, the Corps announced it would close Mr. Go to all traffic. The Bayou Latour Ridge sitting was selected to complete the future wetland restoration efforts as natural ridge could regain its historic function in, uh, in sheltering the marsh and and swamp from behind the Gulf of Mexico. Construction began in 2008 and the car completed the closure in 2009. Supplementing construction of the closure, the Army Corps of Engineer also produced the Mr. Go Ecosystem Restoration Plan. This plan outlined many components of revitalizing the wetlands and wet water bodies that have been damaged by the construction and resulting factors of the Mr. Go. The roughly $2.9 billion included many different facets. The Mr. Go es Ecosystem Restoration Plan was never, <clears throat> was never implemented due to disagreement about funding. The Corps wanted the states to join the funding, and the states felt that that should be strictly a federal expense. Closer to New Orleans, a robust $1.8 
mile surge barrier costing $1 billion was constructed. This is the largest surge barrier of its kind in the United States. It is two feet lower than the levees it connects in New Orleans, Orleans East and St. Bernard Parish. This allows water to spill over the control, control structure before it overtops these levees.